Curling Through Time, Vintage Photos of Curling Teams from the Early 20th Century. Welcome to our channel, where we dive into the fascinating world of curling. Today, we're taking a trip back in time to explore the vintage photos of curling teams from the early 20th century. Get ready to be captivated by the timeless beauty of this beloved sport. The story of curling begins in medieval Scotland, where it was born on frozen locks. Using stones and brooms, this casual activity evolved into a structured sport over time. In 1838, the Grand Caledonian Curling Club established standardized rules, laying the groundwork for the modern game we know today. Did you know that the word curling first appeared in print in 1620? It was mentioned in a poem by Henry Adamson from Perth, Scotland. The sport was also known as the Roaring Game, due to the sound the stones make while traveling over the pebble on the playing surface. Curling's charm lies in its simplicity, but don't be fooled. Beneath its surface, there are strategic intricacies that make it truly compelling. Played on an ice sheet with concentric circles called the house, teams take turns sliding hefty granite stones toward the center. Each team has eight stones, and each player throws two. The goal is to accumulate the highest score for a game. Points are scored for the stones resting closest to the center of the house at the end of each round. A game usually consists of eight or ten ends. Leading the team is the skip, or team captain, who guides strategic choices. Other players sweep the ice to control the stone's speed and direction. This interplay between skill, teamwork, and strategy defines the elegance of curling on ice. To induce a curved path known as curl, the player causes the stone to slowly rotate as it slides. The path of the rock can also be influenced by two sweepers with brooms or brushes who accompany it and sweep the ice in front of the stone. Sweeping decreases friction, making the stone travel straighter and longer. In the early days of curling, the playing stones were simply flat-bottomed stones from rivers or fields. They lacked handles and were of inconsistent size, shape, and smoothness. The thrower had little control over the curl or velocity, relying more on luck than precision, skill, and strategy. Outdoor curling was very popular in Scotland between the 16th and 19th centuries. Frozen rivers provided ideal ice conditions every winter. Scotland is also home to the World Curling Federation, the international governing body for curling. As the sport spread, it found a new home in Canada, brought there by Scottish emigrants. The Royal Montreal Curling Club, established in 1807, is the oldest active sports club in North America. The United States, Switzerland, and Sweden also embraced curling in the 19th century. Curling became a medal sport in the Winter Olympic Games in 1998. It currently includes men's, women's, and mixed doubles tournaments. The Winter Olympics showcase the pinnacle of curling excellence and the dedication of athletes from around the world. In a world that constantly races forward, curling stands as a testament to the beauty of slowing down. It's a sport that embraces the grace in each glide and the artistry in every well-calculated decision. Curling's story is one of frozen waters, ancient stones, and the fire of competition. So join us on this journey through time as we unveil the captivating vintage photos of curling teams from the early 20th century. Let's celebrate the rich history, the strategic brilliance, and the camaraderie that define this beloved sport. Get ready to be inspired by the timeless beauty of curling. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. And remember, the clinking of stones echoes with the laughter of camaraderie. Stay tuned for our next adventure.